In order to subtract fractions, we have to have a common denominator. And hopefully we can find the least common denominator. Looking at our first example, we have a denominator of two and a denominator of 10. We want to determine the smallest number that is divisible by both two and 10. So in this example, the LCD would be 10. So let's go ahead and rewrite this and leave some space. So we take one half and multiply the denominator by five. We can do that as long as we multiply the numerator by five as well, which is like multiplying by the fraction of five over five, which will give us five tenths minus three tenths. And now that our denominator is the same, we can go ahead and subtract. The denominator stays the same and we subtract the numerators. So five minus three is equal to two. So the difference is two tenths, but two tenths does simplify. We can rewrite 10 as two times five. Notice how they have a common factor of two. So our simplified difference is one fifth. Remember these are not disappearing, they're simplifying to ones. Now let's look at a second example. This one's gonna be a little bit more challenging to determine the least common denominator. And when we have a challenging problem like this, it's helpful to determine the least common denominator by looking at the prime factorization of the denominators. So we're gonna go ahead and rewrite these two fractions with the denominators in prime factored form. So we're gonna have 19 all over the prime factorization of 42. 42 is six times seven. So we'll have two times three times seven minus 13 over the prime factorization of 70. Well, 70 would be 10 times seven, and 10 is two times five. So we'll have two times five times seven. Now we can use these prime factors to help build the least common denominator. Meaning if we want to subtract these fractions, the denominators must be the same and therefore contain the same factors. So starting with this first denominator, we can ask what factors does this denominator have that this one doesn't have? Notice how this one has a factor of five, but this one doesn't. So it's gonna have to have a factor of five if the denominators are going to be the same. So multiply this by five, and we can do this as long as we do the same to the numerator. Now we can go to the second fraction and ask, what does this first denominator have that the second denominator doesn't have? Notice how this has a factor of three and this one doesn't, so it must contain a factor of three if the denominators are going to be the same. So we'll multiply the numerator by three as well. Notice how now we have a common denominator because both denominators contain the same prime factors. So let's go ahead and rewrite this. 19 times five is going to be 95. So we have 95 all over two times three times seven times five, which is equal to 210, minus, here we're going to have 13 times three, that's 39, all over the common denominator of 210. Now that we have a common denominator, we can subtract. Denominator stays the same. The numerator will be 95 minus 39, that's 56. And of course, the last step is to simplify this fraction Let's go ahead and write out the prime factorization of the numerator and denominator. So let's go ahead and clear this out. Here's the prime factorization of 56. We have three factors of two and a factor of seven. And for 210, we'll have 21 times 10 to start. So a factor of two, a factor of three, a factor of five, and a factor of seven. And now we can simplify this fraction. And now we can simplify, two over two simplifies to one, seven over seven simplifies to one. So the simplified difference is four fifteenths.